the term resonance is not discussed that much in the materials of the academy. And so the question is, what's the te technical definition and the significance from a unified physics perspective? So that's like a nice overreaching, overarching uh, subject. And my take on that is uh, as a musician, you know, I take it, uh, my first experience of resonance is coming from playing music and being a drummer and I play a string instrument called a hammer dulcimer, which is a whole bunch of strings, uh, all open. It's kind of the opposite of a piano. You know when on a piano you press a button, the key, and when you lift your hand it mutes it. On a dulcimer it's always open, uh, unless you have pedals, which I do, and you can dampen it. But when you hit a string, you're not just resonating that one string. No matter what string you hit, all the other strings are going to resonate at the same time. And how much they resonate depends on the relationship of the fundamental frequency of that string to the one that you're hitting. And so every single thing that makes a frequency or a vibration is going to affect everything that's in the vicinity of that vibration. And certain things might not be affected at all, and other things might literally ring like a bell, right? And that's why instruments like sitar, for example, from India, have such a cool and interesting sound, because they have sympathetic strings that you don't really pluck that much at all. They're just sitting there waiting for a note to excite it so it'll vibrate in a sympathetic resonance with the fundamental frequency that you're playing, and then it vibrates against a little piece of bone that's at a very slight angle, so it buzzes. And that's why there's the sound of tamburas and sitars. And so for me, that's kind of a personal question because resonance is super important in, in music, certainly, and in acoustic instruments. And you can kind of get esoteric with it, where like somebody's vibe, how they seem, how they feel, the way that they kind of vibrate, sometimes they find somebody where it's just like sympathetic vibrations and the thing goes off the roof. It's called falling in love. And other times you find somebody where you're like, whoa, I don't know what's up with that guy, but I can't even be around that person's bad vibes. And so it can actually translate into personality, into like psychology. And in a unified physics perspective, um, maybe I'll let the other panelists of the other uh, faculty handle the technical unified physics aspect, but it of course ties in to unified physics in the sense that everything is vibration and everything is frequency, um, that matter itself is just these little oscillations in the structure of space-time. So basically everything is cymatics and everything is resonance. And so if you can figure out how and why things are resonating or not, then you could be like, oh, let's purposely make this thing resonate like crazy. And here's the conditions we're gonna get to do that and you get the energy to like froth away in the structure of space-time and all of a sudden you've created a quote unquote over unity or energy device, you know? And that's something obviously that the Resonance Science Foundation is, it has as part of the mission. Um, how and the details of how that works is like one of the most difficult technical challenges in the history of human consciousness. So it's taking a minute to like get it together, but a lot of people are working on that. And um, yeah, that's my like, musician psychology take on that but uh, i'm interested to hear like what marshall and adam would have to say about this that's that's uh being a musician that all um rings true for me as well and uh, when i'm playing music especially when i'm tuning in an instrument you really experience what the sympathetic vibration of resonance is you can hear the the, the, the notes coming beating in this 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 waveform that syncs up and comes into resonance together and you know the fact is is that a vibrating string or a, like a tabla drum head when I tune that um, it is actually the universe it's not separate from the way the universe works it's actually the way the universe works in fact music as a phenomenon is it exists in an, innately and intrinsically in the harmonic structure of the universe. And it's not something that we invented, we actually discovered music. You know, it pre-existed our awareness of these 12 tones and all that you can do with it, we can invent with music, but we didn't invent music, we discovered it. And um, so, so fundamentally, the, the, the structure of the universe from the Planck scale to the universal scale is a is a you know a gradient is a density gradient 
there's a harmonic structure gradient in the structure of the universe. And um, the way I think that in, in unified physics, that resonance is probably, it's a good question. And Darius is always the first to post a question up here and there's always good questions. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, it, it's a good one because it has, it's true. It hasn't really been talked about much. I think probably the word that would most be related to the topic is feedback and the feedback nature of, of the universe, the information feedback, and you know those good examples when you're at a, a concert and and you've got this big massive sound system and they've got these microphones picking up the sound and they get too close to the speaker all of a sudden it just goes crazy that feedback kicks in instantly and it goes overwhelming and that's that's the nature of feedback actually throughout the whole universe it's it's a highly sensitive aspect and so resonance is actually, you know, when Jamie's talking about the strings vibrating just from another string being hit and the other one is the sympathetic resonance kicks in, that's because there's actually a feedback loop going on in that field. And that's the same thing happening throughout the entire cosmos. And in fact, it's happening um, based on the same principles, the same harmonic ratios and all that of music. And... Um, and it's no coincidence then that, and, and Jamie was referring to the, um, the technology. How do you actually then, with the principles of unified physics, how do we be, you know, uh, create something that can extract energy from this unlimited potential we have in the emptiness of space, so the plenum. And it's no coincidence that um, you know, in the Sims patent, uh, for that technology, which anybody can go look up in, through the patent office, um, the uh, magnetohydrodynamics of whatever it's called. I don't quite remember the title of it. You know, the uh, familiar name is the resonator. And it's a technology that's the intention around it and any of these devices is to actually set up a harmonic resonant field based on the same, you know, relationship to the structure of the cosmos, the harmonic nature of it in a localized space where we can set up a, a flow in that field and then you know through through whatever means we can we can convert that into electrical energy and so you know the, the, in that way that's how i see uh both the principle of resonance as the feedback nature of it the the harmonic structure throughout the whole uh span of the universe and then the the technology, the technical application, which is really actually the same as, you know, a guitar string ringing. It's, it's ultimately the same thing. You're setting up a, a resonant field, a local resonant field in that vibrational state.